sense of the humor in Brooklyn Nine-Nine is come from a place of kindness and not punching down. And it's been a, it's a really refreshing thing to watch. This is something that you were thinking about in the writer's room and thinking about coming in from a really compassionate and diverse place. Yeah, for sure. From the very start of the show, that's always been sort of the, the MO. We, um, I think when Mike and I created the show, we had come from Parks and Rec, which also had a similar yeah. sort of tone. Um, and I think that with the characters that we had, we were able to find comedy that wasn't mean or, uh, or punching down, as you were saying. And then I think also with Andy's personality and his comedic style, um, that's, that, that sort of humor had the, the greatest um, synchronicity. I mean, he really, he's a person, I don't know if you remember, he did a roast. Whose roast did he do? It was recently that he did one of those MP, those a Comedy Central roasts, and all of the jokes he told were about himself. And he, the bit was that he was being incredibly mean, but it, all he did was insult himself. And so I think that, that with the actors that we have and the characters that we created, those kinds of that, that was the kind of comedy that, that worked the best, and that we wanted to talk to do. Um, today, in, in like current in current politics, we there has been a lot of. Um, uh, not even disconnect, a lot of ten, uh, tension with police officers. And so having a show that focuses on police officers, uh, how do you guys approach that or do you guys even, is that something that you guys discuss or how? Yeah, we discuss that a lot. I mean, we really do. Um, I think to some extent, one, of the, one part of the answer is that we try to model the best version of the police possible. Um, but at the same time, we really are conscious of not uh, painting a, 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 a rosy or too rosy a picture. We often have them investigating crimes of corruption. We did an episode at the end of last year. The last two episodes were about uh, infringing civil liberties um, using surveillance devices. We did an episode where Terry was racially profiled by another NYPD officer. Um, we've talked about sexism. And, and so it's always a balance between trying to have fun with them being police and and acknowledge that they're doing a thing that they love while at the same time and that and that there are things and that they are trying to do good and be good while at the same time acknowledging that there are problems in the police force in general and specifically at times in the NYPD and we also try to do some stories that are empathetic like we did a story that I love which was called Show Me Going where Rosa it was based on a, a radio call um, that there was an active shooter in, in a hospital in the Bronx and you could hear dispatch, They have it's on YouTube, and she was talking and people kept calling in and they would say their badge number and then they would say, show me going. And that was cops running towards danger. And it's chilling when you hear it. It's really chilling. And so we wanted to do a story where Rosa runs towards danger, you hear her say her badge number, and everyone else hangs back and what it's like to go through that because that is an element of their jobs. <laughs> um, so, I was just talking to the other guys about the, the ongoing heist episodes uh -huh. that you guys have every season, which blow my mind and I'm totally looking forward to it every season. What do you guys do to up it? Like, what, when you're in the writer's room, you're like, okay, last year's one was kind of cool, but this one's going to be amazing. <laughs> what do you... It's very difficult if you have any ideas. <laughs> no, I, it was, I, it honestly wasn't that hard. It was really, they're really fun to write. The proposal definitely like threw us for a loop because that was such a like big thing to happen. And we really struggled last year with like, could we go back to just a normal heist with the stakes or like who wins a like, yeah, who wins a homemade the, trophy? The, doing one the year after the heist, was, uh, the proposal was after difficult proposal, because it felt yes. like, and then it was, yeah, there were a lot of pitches, you know, of equally high stakes, as you can imagine. Yeah, I think the joke, there was a joke last year where home was like, you need to have, you need to tell Jake that you're pregnant, you made Amy force, <laughs> force a pregnancy, because that was a thing we talked about in the writers' room. Because that's the only thing we can do that will top the proposal. Um, so that it'll be a challenge again this year. You know, we've just, we, we've talked a little bit about heist episodes this year, but I, I, I don't think we've landed on anything, and it's, but also. But it's really free. It's a really fun, there are different rules for the heist. We get to have fun with it. It's fun to, have, to play the comedy at that pitch and to play all of their characters at that pitch. 
And I mean, it is a, it's a back and forth where we go, where we'll have an idea and then we'll go, can we make it bigger? Uh, or can we make it sillier? So it's, it's a lot of work. No, and as Dan said with the, the police stuff, there's a lot of like real world issues and we do try to be very like conscious of of, of things in the most normal episodes and you, you get nice to write the highest episode and it's just like, it's pure fun <laughs> and it's it's ridiculous and silly and it's like, I think it's everyone's favorite episode to write. And I think it shows. We got yeah. time for one more question. Good guest stars coming up. Just, you've had two of the Guardians of the Night Night. Yes, Sean Astin and Lynn. Is Mark Hamill the future? Um, that's a great idea. Uh, we would love to have Mark Hamill. If we can figure out the right part for him, I think we would love to do that. And then I think, you know, we're really at the beginning of the season. So we're in terms of the writing, um, I think we'll see some of our old friends for sure. I think we hopefully we'll have a Pimento episode and hopefully have a... <laughs> I can't imagine a season without a Pontiac Bandit, so I can imagine that, Mark and Jackson. And then hopefully we'll have some other exciting... We're, we're bandying about a bunch of exciting... Yeah, games. we've written a couple great parts. Or they're, they're being written, so we just have to cast them. You know, it's always a challenge to cast, like guest stars, because there's so many great people, and, and people are always so willing to do it, but it's always scheduling. TV scheduling is like... You know, we have a great part in episode two this year, and it's yeah. like a terrific role, but it shoots a given week and it's like the people we've we you know you talk to people and they would love to do the show but they're like if they're important guest stars they work a lot and it's not always easy to find to line it up so that's always the challenge is, is even with someone like Mark Hamill who we've talked to a little bit you know I think it's like it's finding something that works for him where you write a good role and also finding a time when he could ever have time to do it if you you know if he wanted to it's, it's always an interesting puzzle. thank you guys